guys, I'm Sifu Dung, and today we are talking about tiger style. Now, traditionally in Shaolin, tiger was one of the five main animals of Shaolin that they based their kung fu styles upon. And there's an old Chinese saying that there's no room for two tigers on the same mountain. It's because tigers were so fierce that only one could live in peace on the mountain. Now, looking at it, traditionally, Lions are not indigenous to China, so that means the tiger was the king of beasts. And what we're going to do today is we're going to teach you a little bit about tiger style, how to make your tiger style more effective, and also make you stronger as a martial artist as well. So let's go. All right, first up is going to be grip strength. Now, one of the main weapons in tiger style is the tiger claw itself, or what we call fu jiao. Now, to form the fu jiao, typically what we do is we open up the hands as wide as we can, and we crimp the fingers all the way in. Now, this allows for striking this way. Now, some people say you can strike with fingertips, you can strike with the palm. There's a lot of different things that we can do, and we'll go over some of the applications later, but now we're talking about strengthening that up. Now, traditionally in Shaolin, what they used to use was giant clay pots, and they would grab onto the top of the pots, and utilizing that to not only grab, because it would be filled with water, and depending on what level you were, was how much water you can put in there. So, one of the things that you can do is you can get a jar and you can simply grab onto the top of that. Now, as you get stronger, you're going to have to fill that water up a little bit more, a little bit more, and you want to be able to sustain and hold that position here. Now, if you don't have a jar, one of the things that I always like to use is I like to use simple plate weights. So for those of you guys who may have a home gym or something like that, but you can pick these up at any kind of sporting goods store. Now, the one I like to use, this is a two and a half pound one, and it's enough to cover the palm from this position. You'll see that there's still a little bit of gap in here as well, but it allows me to grip all the way through, and you'll see it actually allows my fingers to come right over that first digit right over there from here. Now, as I do this, I squeeze, I relax, I squeeze, I relax, I squeeze, I relax. Now, that's one way of gripping the weight this way and strengthening that grip here. Another way to do it is just like that, simulating holding those clay pots. Now, size of this does matter. Okay. This one is a five pound weight. Now you'll see that when I grab this one, I can do it. I'm grabbing a little bit more with the fingertips. It's a little bit harder to grip in. So the whole grip itself is not strengthening as strong as when I was doing the two and a half pounds. Now, the other way I like to do is to simulate that, that pot is I take one of my weights and I've actually kind of rigged it a little bit. So that way it allows me to grip that two and a half pound on top and I have screws on both top and bottom. And now what I can do is I can actually add weight on the bottom. So as I get stronger, I can add more weight or if I need to, I can also lighten it. But the way we do this is from this position is grabbing on top and you can simply lift and hold. Now that's one of the tricky things is to be able to hold. Now you can relax and you can lift and hold. Now as you're doing this, one of the things that's also very important is that when you're grabbing, watch the structure of your wrist. You don't want your wrist bending here because now it's caused a weak point and after a while, what that's going to do is it's going to fatigue the wrist out, if not also injure the wrist. So you got to be very careful when you do this. Don't start too heavy don't start too fast. Take your time and it's a gradual, gradual buildup.
now the next drill that we're going to work on is going to work on your reaction timing. Now reaction timing can be done in a couple of different ways. One of the ways I like to do it, I have assortment of different things I like to use, but we simply start off with a basic bean bag. Now you can start with this and it's just as it is. You can get a piece of cloth, fold it up. You can sew it in, you can purchase these and they can be filled with anything from beans to rice to resin it doesn't really matter so as you go through this what we're basically going to do is we're going to start it in one hand now as we do this we want to keep it out in front of us here now we switch the hands and we grab it now when we grab we want to make sure that we're squeezing into it from here we relax and grab now the goal is to keep it right in front of you the whole time and you want to practice grabbing and squeezing each time that you do it. Now, as you do this and as you're doing it for training, one of the things that we do, of course, because Tiger is known for being a very strong animal, is we get down and we sink down in our stancing. So from here, we'll keep it in this position. We can hold the square horse. You can use a bow stance. In this position, you can go lower. So there's a lot of different variations that you can use with a simple bean bag. The other way I like to do it is with a tennis ball. So you can do the same thing from here and as you grab you squeeze. Now when we squeeze on this one we want to squeeze also into the fingertips. It's good that the palm grabs it and you can squeeze this way which is another form of conditioning but if you can also grab with those fingertips that's also good. Now if you have different size we also have different style of ball that you can grab and squeeze as well and that's going to work on that reaction timing of in and out as you focus on that type of Fu Jiao or Tiger Claw again. Now the next aspect of training in that tiger style is the strength aspect, which tiger is known for. It's known for being strong. And it's said that a tiger practitioner should have strong tendons, bones, structure, everything. So the next one we're going to do is going to be a basic push-up, but we're going to have some different variations to go with that. Okay, when we're talking push-ups, there's all different types of variations of push-ups. There's wide grip push-ups, there's traditional push-ups, there's diamond push-ups. So we're going to be working with today is going to be a variation of the basic push-up. Now, right now we're going to go ahead and work on the wall. And for those of you guys who are uh, no strangers to push-ups, that hopefully this will add a different flavor to it as well. Now, when you're looking at push-ups, you want to keep those palms flat. Now, when we do this, we also want to keep it in alignment with the shoulder. And then when we push, we basically want to come down from here. And as we push, we want to engage those back muscles. We want to extend all the way here, squeezing the chest as we go to the peak. Okay. So if we do it from here, it's just going to be this position like this. Now, this is a very low impact style of push up. What this is to ensure is to make sure that everything is structurally getting in the right position. Now, the next variation of it is going to be a fist style of push-ups. Now, of course, you can always increase the difficulties by the type of incline that you have on, on your angle as well. So if we angle a little bit more, now we get into a position where we have a little bit more resistance on this. When we get onto the floor, you can also do the same thing by elevating your feet and making it a little bit more difficult that way. But again, what we're looking at right now is basically structurally keeping that fist in alignment with the wrist and in alignment with everything else. So that way this is making our punches stronger 
and a little bit more solid. Now, as we get to the tiger variation, what we're basically going to do is we're going to utilize the fingertips. And that's going to, again, keep the position of our body right over the hand. And you want to just kind of keep that pressure on the fingertips and push on out. Again, you can increase by giving yourself a little more angle. And if you're doing them on the floor, you can always do it traditionally on the floor, but also elevate your feet if you want a little bit more resistance as well. Now, another aspect of our training of the Fujiao or Tiger Claw is conditioning and conditioning of the hands. Now, of course, there's many different ways to condition the hands, but the most important thing is we got to be careful and make sure that it's a gradual progression. So that way you ri don't risk injury or hurting your hands. The worst thing is you beat up your hands. They're all cut up and bloody. And then, of course, you can't train. Now you got to wait for yourself to heal. So it's always best to gradually build yourself up with conditioning. Now, one of the ways we do this is by utilizing simple things. Again, we can utilize our bean bag. You can even utilize a simple towel. Now, in some styles, they actually focus on the fingertips for the Fujiao, which you can also do. Okay? Now, if you're utilizing fingertips, the thing you gotta be careful, of course, if you're striking for the eyes, you gotta be careful because if you miss, then you hit the forehead, and now you may have some broken fingers. So a lot of times, utilizing the palm is one of the best ways to strike with that food gel, and we'll go over that in a little bit as well. But when we utilize the bean bag, what we're basically doing is conditioning the palm. Now, we start this one off light, and we basically hit with the palm here. You can also hit with the back of the hand. In some styles of the tiger, we actually hit with the back hand as well. We call it da jerong. So basically, palm of the hand, back of the hand. Palm of the hand, back of the hand. Now, of course, as you get a little more condition, you can increase the power in which you hit with. Now, you can also utilize a towel. Of course, being softer, it's going to take a little bit longer. But you can do the same thing where you're going back of the hand, palm of the hand. Now, if you want to increase, one of the things that I also like to do is simply take one of our plate weights again, and we make it just a little bit stronger by wrapping that bad boy right in here. And what we'll do is we'll put it in here. And now you have a little bit harder surface to hit with. Now, as you do this, like I said, take your time and gradually build up. Start with something low and do it for a little while until your hand gets conditioned to the point where it you can sustain that. Otherwise, again, one of the things we don't want is we don't want to injure your hands and then you have a crippled tiger that you have to do. All right, here's the moment that some of you have been really waiting for is actually striking with our Fujiao. Now, what that's gonna entail is bring everything that we've worked on and putting it together to form that strike. Now, with the Fujiao, this is basically a variation of also a basic straight punch. So with the Fujiao itself, what we're looking at doing is hitting with the palm. So when we strike the surface something, you want to be able to hit the palm. So if I'm working on a bag, standing punching bag, hanging punching bag, if you're hitting a tree, either way, you want to look at utilizing the palm first, okay? Again, fingers, you can strike with the sensitive parts, portions of the face, the eyes, those type of things. but preferably is hitting with that palm. Now, when you're hitting with that straight on Fujiao, what you're looking at is the alignment of your arm. Now, more importantly than the alignment of the arm, because that's gonna keep us from getting injured, but to really draw power, we wanna utilize the waist. So when we hit, we don't wanna hit just surface, we're looking at burying the strike in a couple inches. So when we strike with it, we connect the waist and we hit all the way in, all the way through. So with this basic motion, we want to turn the waist and extend. This is where those push-ups really came into place. That strengthens those muscles that keep us aligned and keep that wrist protected as well. Now, in addition to the straight one up top, we also have one down below. Now, this is a scooping position. We also refer to it as yum wat. So this is right into the groin, right into the family jewels. 
So we want to hit in from here. Now, you can grab if you really want to, um, but for the most part, it's hitting with the palm, and it's a quick strike right underneath. Get their attention real quickly. Now, another variation of this fujiao is a sweeping fujiao. Now, it still utilizes the palm. What we're looking at striking is to the ear, to the temple, to the jaw, and basically what this does is once you have the position here, you can come around to the side. So when it hits, you turn the waist and it swings to the side. Now, same thing, we're still bearing that thing in a couple inches so that we're not just hitting just surface. But this is enough to rupture an eardrum, to knock somebody out when you turn around and strike right to the side with that sweeping tiger claw as well. All right, last but not least, we're gonna go over an actual tiger technique. So. What we're going to do is we're going to utilize these fujiaos again. We're going to use it for blocking as well as for striking. Now, utilizing the fujiao for blocking, we don't actually use the claw. We still utilize the arms because our arms are much bigger weapons when we block with them. So the first motion we're going to do is going to be a pawing motion, which we refer to as like a potent kill or a downward blocking motion here. We're gonna utilize that form as we come right on in. So this is gonna be step one. Now from here, now that we've blocked our strike, we're now gonna counter with that straight in fujiao from here. Now that tiger claw comes straight in as number two. So we have one, two. Now from here, we're gonna use that paw again as we come across with that same hand we just hit with. So we have one, two, Three, now lastly, we're gonna sweep across with that other Fujiao coming from the side. So we have one, two, three, and four. Now as we utilize the waist, we wanna really gain some power with this because again, we have that strength of the tiger. So from here, we have one, two, three, four. All right, again, we have one, two, three, four. So now with these motions, you notice they're circular, they're straight, and this is to give you the opportunity to attack and block at all different angles. And now we're gonna put it together. I hope you enjoyed working on some of these tiger techniques. It's one of my favorite animals. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. get into harder substances where some people do it strictly on stone where you hit directly on stone or a hard surface so you hit here here which is loud as hell <laughs>